Mulțumesc foarte mult! Bună dimineața, doamnelor și domnilor! Sunt acasă la București, încep în limba română, dar for the sake of clarity, I will use further English. Uh, actually, I have a whole uh, package that uh, uh, my colleagues back in Brussels uh, prepared. I'm not going to do it, <laughs> um, because largely the objective uh, has been achieved. I'm uh, personally very happy that this event takes place in Bucharest and that uh, Siveco organized uh, such a an impressive gathering of uh, people dedicated uh, to uh, e-learning, which is one of the most uh, thrilling challenges uh, for the information society and for the society as a whole nowadays. Uh, I want to say that uh, in the very beginning, that the main challenge of uh, e-learning is not the, te the technical challenge. Largely, the problems have been solved. Largely, the technology is there. And the business sector, one of our major stakeholders, has largely done its part in it, which is very good. The most difficult part of e-learning is before us, and it has to be addressed in a very holistic way, and every bit of this uh, uh, endeavor uh, should be addressed properly, timely, and uh, very correctly, because e-learning is going to affect the society as a whole, and we are on the verge of a real revolution. As Radu showed you yesterday, basically no major uh, change in education has occurred since the public system of learning has been put in place several hundred years ago. What we are going to do now and what e-learning is going to do is a radical change in the way we are educating all our people, not only our kids, and the way they are going to relate between themselves and between themselves and the society. This is a real challenge. And uh, the process is going to be very long. The process is going to be very difficult. And the process has many, many, uh, so to say, unknown issues before us, as I was saying. Nobody is today able to deny the fact that we are largely depending on the critical innovation in the field of uh, education and uh, training. Basically, the European Commission considers that in terms of uh, fulfilling uh, the targets of the, um, its strategy, Europe 2020, the process will depend on the uh, innovation and the transformation that is going to happen in the education uh, sector. We consider that digital learning, e-learning, is going to represent the catalyst for change and innovation in the coming years. However, we are at the very beginning of the process. Why do we consider that? Because as everybody in this room is very, very, very aware, changes in education take a very long time. So if you are going to initialize a process now, you can expect to ripe the outcomes, to ripe the fruits by, let's say, an average of 10 years from now on. This means a very strong commitment from all the actors involved in this process. And basically, I, I think that no major actor of the society today is spared from assuming responsibility and taking an active part in this process. So I want to tell you not 
about the technicalities of the process in terms of uh, uh, innovation in the field of uh, information society and so on, but I would like to stress the main challenges and the main threats from the political and the administrative and economic situation. In terms of adopting a mm -hmm. politics or a policy, a European policy in the education, uh, in the digital education, there are several barriers ahead. First of all, we consider that resistance to change in the education and training systems are clearly there and they, uh, the, the, the factors involved in the process are still lacking a very clear awareness of the benefits. So, uh, uh, secondly, there is a basic lack of knowledge in terms of appropriate pedagogical models. There is a lack of availability of relevant quality content in terms of uh, e-learning. There is an unsatisfactory level of digital competence, basically among teachers. There is a large disparity between curricula and various cross-curricular approaches. And last but not least, there is a severe lack of budgets and budget cuts and budget red tapes in terms of financial resources. That's why I consider that besides being a technical and uh, educational approach, e-learning is a political approach and a legal approach at the same time. As you very well know, education is not a part of the competencies of the European Union. Member states decided that education should stay in the responsibility of the member states and as part of their sovereign policies and of their independence and sovereignty as national states within a union. E-learning is, is pushing for a communitarization of the processes. And this is very important. What does this mean? This means that the treaties have to be changed. Why, how do we change treaties? Treaties are exclusively changed by the will of the member states. That means that the political system in each and every member state should reach the conclusion that as they did in terms of coal and steel put together their resources, they will have to accept to put together their resources in terms of education. And considering the large spread and the large differences between member states, the process is going to be very complicated. And besides being involved in the process of putting together and, uh, and uh, creating new, new technologies, the stakeholders in this process, and here I mean largely the business, the civil society, the governments, the political society, have to reach a common understanding of the process in order to start the necessary adaptations at the level of the member states and finally to discuss it at the European level. This is going to be a very, very strong challenge because it has to be done via legal adaptations. And if we are considering exclusively Romania's uh, case, which in terms of e-learning is very advanced as compared to other member states, is the Romanian legislation enough adapted to admit and to uh, enable setting up a system of digital learning? Are all the necessary legal adaptations there in order to, to create a smooth and a seamless process? I think that the answer in full honesty is no. This is not a bad thing because digital learning is something very new, but at the same time, considering the lengths of the legal processes and of the legal adaptations, we have to add the burden of uh, legal adaptation to all the other administrative and, uh, let's say, content burdens that are 
put in front of the uh, implementation of the digital um, learning. I think that we need to put in place, and that is why I so highly commend the initiative of Civeco, a common vision about how we can mobilize and make the key actors of change to be very active. And here I think that we have to work together, not only with the professional communities and with the business communities, but we also have to engage parents associations, children association, pupil association, and of course trade unions of the professionals of the sector, which have a very, very, very strong word to say. How far are we in this process? We cannot get to the fair results unless all the stakeholders are not involved. The benefits of e-learning will remain, will remain untapped unless stakeholders do not embrace an integrated approach. We need a holistic vision. We need to be prepared not only with technical solutions, but also with political and legal solutions. It will be very difficult to convince the politicians to get back to their constituencies and preach the digital learning. But this is exactly what we need to do, because we know very well that politicians are one of the most vibrant vectors of change, and that they are the bearers of, uh, of uh, uh, let's say, a successful process. I think that in, the, in a second approach, we have to dedicate our efforts, and this is what at this very moment, according to its mandate extended by the treaties, the, Commission, the European Commission is doing, support the research and innovation in the process the actual framework program seven, and it's very soon continuation, which is going to be the new framework pro program named Horizon 2020, extends the necessary amounts of money to support research and development and innovation in this area. The annual investments that only DG Info so Directorate General Information Society and Media is uh, dedicating to research is around 50 to 55 million euros per year, including various processes which are designing the future classroom and uh, uh, school pilots. Uh, we have reached a level of uh, 1,000 classrooms in 12 member states helping teachers to collaborate and to innovate in ICT-enhanced formative classrooms assessment. So, are we ready for that? Are we prepared to take uh, such an extensive uh, challenge and to bring it to a successful process? I am very confident that uh, if each and every of us commit ourselves for this goal, we will make it. Let's not expect a quick uh, result. Let's not expect a quick, a quick outcome. Because largely we are working with the most important resource we have, which is the human resource. Maybe children are going to be thrilled by the fact that they will have eventually to change. And I don't know here how things are going to happen, but let's, uh, let's figure it out with, with what we have now. We'll have to change from uh, uh, notebooks to uh, digital tablets. Let's think that teachers will teach from their uh, tablet. Yeah? As very well Radu showed uh, yesterday in his uh, presentation. Let's consider that. 
personally, I don't think it will happen like that because until all the necessary premises of the process are going to be uh, established in a very uh, solid way, technology will be already changed. Yeah? New uh, means and new tools will be available. Industry is not going to wait for us to make up our minds and to put in place a dedicated policy for uh, e-learning. Is this the real way to do it? Do we have a full vision of what we, ha we want to achieve? So I think that uh, events like those that uh, uh, Siveco organized today should be continued, and I strongly encourage the organizers to do so and to be extended at the level of the European Union. I had the opportunity to introduce uh, Siveco's experience at the level of the European Commission, and I want to say that uh, the results was uh, far beyond my expectation. People were thrilled Thing and uh, uh, we at the European Commission we we we've seen a lot, uh, but this experience was uh, one of the most thrilling experiences in a new area. So I can tell you that we are very committed to continue and to work in order to find out the means to put in place uh, the, the necessary political administrative uh, decision at the level of the Commission and at the level of the European Union. But we have to provide evidence that what we are thinking today is workable and that what we are, let's say, discussing today is going to be very soon transformed because you know very well that politicians and administrators from this point of view lack patience and they want results now that what we are dedicating ourselves to is going to happen and is going to make the difference. Uh, I don't want to, 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 to say those uh, nomina odiosa uh, that are characterizing the economic environment uh, in our days. We all know what it's all about. We all know that we can get out of this situation only being innovative and only boosting the, uh, the forces of the, um, of the factors of production. I think that a new model, a new economic model, has to be centered on the fully development of the human resource. So what we have now in terms of human resources can be boosted by the digital learning, and I'm convinced about that. We have to find the real means in order to turn that into reality and to be able to convert the energies and the creativity of the work of labor into reality. Uh, the time is ripe and uh, the penetration of ICT is uh, fantastic. You all know the figures. Uh, you, you, you've seen the presentations uh, uh, yesterday the, the, of the speed at which uh, transformations and uh, changes uh, take place in this uh, area. However, we have to push it further. We need to have uh, a real penetration of ICT in the fields of societal life. And this is happening as we are speaking now. Right now, education has to be described as the frontier of the last frontier or holdout of the digital revolution. So we w there will be no digital revolution without a digital system of education, a compre comprehensive. Because once again, I draw your attention on the fact that a revolution in education is going to change deeply the society. We'll, have to, we'll, we'll, we'll change deeply the relation between the individual and the state. 
will change the profile of our democracies, which is very important, and we have to think about that as well. The moment when ICT is going to be a reality, and, it's, and it is already a reality, uh, things are going to uh, deeply affect our daily lives. Consider the fact that we are already connected. Practically, I can't believe that there is only one single person in this room that in this very moment is not connected. So we are connected to various networks which are processing information and uh, uh, which make us really digital citizens of uh, Europe. We have to go further. We are not, uh, uh, let's say, dedicating efforts uh, meaningless. The European Commission is heavily supporting, for instance, the introduction of the broadband and eventually of alternative solutions to broadband. But something had to be carried through those broadband. We are not wiring Europe only for the sake of it, but we are wiring Europe for transforming Europe into a digital, a real digital society. And we have to be very much aware of this. So the ultimate goal is to make ICT such an integral part of daily learning and teaching practices that the students and teachers do not even realize that they use ICTs. That is, that ICT becomes an organic part of the individual. So with this, uh, uh, let's say, uh, wish of mutual commitment in order to perform this very, very important and it's very, very dedicated change, I'm thanking you very much and I'm confident that uh, we are going to move, uh, first of all, to a real digital education and then to a real digital society. Thank you very much.